And if you are betting on the Falcons being in the conversation and in the mix past December or even early January, you're in good company because Arthur Smith and Drake London are betting on the same. Arthur Smith said he was planning to play 20 to 21 games this season in reference to rushing guys back who missed a lot of time last season due to injury. So how significant is it to you that right here in June, Coach Smith is already talking to the media about going to the postseason? You know what, T, I find it interesting because, you know, Arthur Smith, he's the type of guy where he doesn't like to reveal anything, like, like nothing at all. And a lot of times we find out things that he says or behind closed doors through the players. You know, and a lot of times they kind of like – blurt it out, you know, have diarrhea of the mouth and, and kind of say to some of the things that he says to them. And, and then you kind of get an understanding of where they're trying to go. But for those words to come out of his mouth and say, you know what? Hey, we're looking to play 20 to 21 games. And, you know, that's the game. The season is only 17. So, hey, they're trying to get to the playoff season, playoffs and also make some noise once they get there. So I think it's it's very significant because I think that when you look at what they've done in, in this offseason, they, they waited around for two years to be able to actually spend some money. And then they sp spent money on the on the defensive side of the football to get some veterans in because they didn't want to they didn't like they didn't like the idea of having a young guys being drafted to come in and go through that learning curve. Grady Jetter even mentioned that the other day when he spoke to the media. He's talking about like, hey, he got somebody in David Alumata that he knows is going to come in and play right away. You know exactly what to expect from him. So I think that, you know, when you have that, you built up the defense, you got a defense coordinator that you like that kind of matches your 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 style of play and what you want to go with. So now on the offensive side of the football, you established yourself last year, you know, one, the top five rushing team in the NFL, and you built upon that. You brought your guys back on the offensive line. You spent the money there. There's a lot of money invested up, up, up front. So, you're going to expect those guys to be better this year. So I think that when you have all of those things coming into play, yeah, I'll probably be confident too, T. <laughs> yeah, and, and when I asked him about the change, just the difference, year yeah. one, year two, and now year three for him, because we always talk about it for the from the player perspective, right? Like right. especially if you're a rookie going into your second year or what have you, he responded and he basically went right. And I said, boy, one thing about him is he's straight no chaser. Even though he Absolutely. doesn't give you a lot, when he does give it to you, it's going to be direct. And he literally said, well, my expectation is that's going to be different. Is this going to be a winning season at home? Yeah. So yeah. he said, you know, he talked about the ups, the evens, the downs over the last two years, and he said. Home field should be home. I, well, I kind of coined this, but he basically said it should be there should be an advantage there. So I was like, yeah, home field should be home field advantage. And so he wants to set that stage and set the tone. And I said, you know, especially coming back with uh, back to back home games to open the season, which is great. And then we kind of went into that conversation, like you said, about the 2021 20, games. And then Jarvis, it was repeated recently by a player to talk about the consistency of it. Drake London had this to say about it on Good Morning Football on Monday. At the point we're at right now, I think that if you're not thinking about playing 20 plus games, then what are you doing? You know, our mentality and our goal is to just keep on playing through the postseason and make it to the big one. And I think you feel that in the locker room right now. Everybody's juiced. Everybody's hyped to get to work. And I think we're all on the same path. Oh, wow. That that says a lot because. You know, I think Drake is the guy that, you know, he's seems to me like the type of guy that, like, whatever the coach says, like, that's what we're going to do. And, and he's all in for it because when he started talking about, you know, I asked him about, you know, coach coming up the plays and everything like that, you know, and we, where he comes up with the plays, <laughs> he started talking about positionless football. You know, and, and some of those things start throwing those things out there because you could tell the dude is super excited about what the potential they can do on the offensive side of the football. That's why I said my expectations for them, like these dudes got to be putting up 26, 27 points a game because, like you said, like the money is being invested up in the offensive line, so you're pretty solid up there in what you are uh, you, going to be bringing to the table on Sundays. And then with all of the pass catchers, like I'm not even naming positions, all of the pass catchers that you have, all of the running backs that you have you can hand the ball off to, I think this this offense is up to something special, and I think Drake London is getting the same, is feeling the same way as well. And speaking of feeling the same and just having that consistency, I actually heard that thread throughout players, coaches, and you know, one of the individuals I was ex excited to speak with on Friday was assistant head coach defense Jerry Gray because 
just so much that he's done. You know, we like to call him the DB whisperer on yes, some level, absolutely. but really he's impacted defenses across the league for almost three decades. So I thought it was interesting as well. So now you, you're talking about the head coach and he puts it out there 20 to 21 games. And then you hear a co-sign from Drake London saying, Hey, that's the culture we're establishing here that we have that expectation of ourselves. And then you hear it from Jerry Gray and saying that was one of the main reasons that he wanted to come here. And it's interesting because I was speaking, there were three of us that were talking to coach Gray on Friday, uh, Joe mm -hmm. Patrick, our guy here over at 92.9, Tori McElhaney analyst and uh, writer reporter for AtlantaFalcons.com and me. And we, the three of us had kind of conversed before we started talking to Jerry because we all were like, the three of us were excited. We didn't really care course, who else yeah. was in the building. Yeah. When Jerry uh -huh. Gray walked through, we were, the three of us just got a shot over there. So, so uh, he he jumps in, and uh, and I think Michael Rothstein of ESPN.com may have stopped over as well. But my point being, we all had the same questions, which was why Falcons? That's where we started. Why yeah. this organization over any other? And he said it was because he felt like the very culture Smith talked about, the very culture London talked about. He feels that he can establish and solidify that for them. When you think about the success that he's had for so many other franchises within football, do you think that he's co-signing on that as well, saying, yeah, we think you are another one of those guys. You came here because you believe you can solidify a, a winning culture and he can actually do it? Yeah, uh, I, I, think, I believe so. And, 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 and my main reason for saying that is because you have so many people – different people saying the same thing, right? Because Grady talked about this on Friday about, you know, there's one thing for you to believe within the organization, right? Arthur Smith believes because he's been here for the past two years. Grady Jarrett believes because he's been for here for the past two years and he's seen it. But when you have guys like a Ryan Nielsen deciding to come here to lead the Saints, where he, the organization that he's been with for quite some time, they gave him the opportunity to be able to coach in the NFL and establish himself as a uh, as a prime candidate. You also talk about Calais Campbell, a veteran, you know, who he ain't trying to come here just to make no money. Like he's trying to come to win. You got Jerry Gray, who has done so many things and covered so many things, playing in the NFL as as, as well. Like it's hard to sell them those cats. A, a hill of beans or some magic beans like football players football coaches they see through all the bull crap and for them to be able to see through the bull crap and actually see what arthur smith has going on here and, and, and essentially say the same thing that arthur smith is saying they've been telling us like like it's hard for you not to believe because like you see all you see the vision you see the plan we talked about terry fontenot before the offseason even start t about what's the vision, what's the plan, what are you trying to do? And I think we're seeing we're seeing it. And it's pretty clear because you got people from outside the organization coming here and saying, you know what? I want to be here too. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's very powerful because you make an excellent point about the fact that internally you can be excited because you've had the good fortune or not so good fortune of right. seeing the Arthur Smith the regime yeah. either in year one or year two or both. And going into year three, you already know what it looks like. You already know what it feels like to overachieve, if you will. Now mm -hmm. we're at a point in place where you're saying, okay, no more overachievement. We have an expectation that we're going to be better. So a Drake London, I mean, year two, I'm going to be better. Even a Kyle Pitts. Now we didn't hear from him necessarily, but we spoke to Dave Ragone and others on Friday talking about the expectations like, hey, give him a break. We feel like he's going to be that guy that we saw in year one. Year two was filled with injuries and, and challenges with folks under center. So <clears throat> exactly. There it is. <laughs> we try to be nice to folks. Oh, the day one, but we also call it what it is. It is and so is. given what that Kyle will have his what third year under yeah. Dave Ragone, given that he'll have a quarterback that he's able to vibe with better and, and just really have more field rapport on and off the field, but also his body will actually agree with him and cooperate yes. with him. I think we're going to see so much better, but Hey, every day is, what are your thoughts on the fact that we are hearing right now on the NBA final side, a lot about culture, culture, heat culture, heat culture. What about Falcons culture? What does that culture look like to you? Are you buying in as well? We know it's still on paper right now. We know we haven't even gotten to mandatory mini camp, but at the end of the day with what you have seen off season moves expectations, attitude, et cetera. Let us know what you guys think. Check us out on YouTube. Drop some of the comments. You know, if you drop some good ones, we will actually share those comments on air as well. And of course, 
Don't forget that wherever you download every other podcast, you might as well download ATL Day Ones and take us with you wherever you go in and around Atlanta Metro.